Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Will It Digest. We asked what you would like to see digested and somebody suggested soil and I just happen to have some right here. We are located in the beautiful state of North Carolina and our soils vary dramatically from region to region. On our coast the soil is very sandy as you would expect being near the beaches. In the Piedmont we have clay so much clay, in fact, that this region is well known for brick and pottery making. Then in the mountains, we have mineral rich topsoil, which is perfect for the green rolling hills of the Blue Ridge and the Smoky Mountains. Soil is the most common environmental sample that is analyzed after water, and it can be a tricky matrix because its composition varies so much across the country. And sometimes the soil needs to be prepped by drying, sieving, or grinding before it can be digested. The US EPA has two methods that govern trace metals sample preparation for soil, and they are both approved for the same 26 elements. 3051A is a leach digest using nitric acid with hydrochloric acid. And 3052, which is a total digest, that includes the use of hydrofluoric acid to break down the silicates. To explain the differences in these methods, and to talk about when each method is used, I have asked a very special guest and my esteemed colleague, Elaine Hasey, to the set. Hey, Elaine. Hi, Holly. Nice little studio you got here. Well, thanks for inviting me over to talk about soils today, a subject very near and dear to my heart. Well, believe it or not, CEM has been working with EPA since 1987 when we helped develop the first microwave method for NPDES. From there, the EPA expanded to RECRA and developed method 3051 a soil leach method using a microwave, and that's faster than method 3050, which is a hot block, hot plate method that takes several hours to run. But both of these methods aim to mimic what metals would leach from the soil into the groundwater, what we would call environmentally available elements, so they aren't particularly aggressive digestions. And for this reason, you don't reach super high temperatures, you don't hold them there for a long period of time. You also won't be able to use this method to determine soil composition. For that, you need to use EPA 3052. It's a more aggressive approach to the matrix decomposition. So, EPA 3051A goes like this. Weigh a half a gram of well-mixed soil or sediment into your vessel. Oh, I see that you're using a 55 mil express vessel, Howie. Did you know that that was the most popular vessel in the world for running this method? Woo! So once your soil is in the vessel, Add nine mils of concentrated nitric acid and three mils of concentrated hydrochloric acid. Now this mixture is also referred to as reverse aqua regia. Just be sure not to pre-mix it because it'll generate strong chlorine gas and you'll clear the lab out for sure. So cap your vessel and place it into the turntable along with your spikes and your SRMs and your method blanks and you are ready for the microwave. All right, thanks for the tutorial, Elaine. So now I'm gonna place my batch into the microwave. And then I'm going to select the CEM One Touch method for US EPA 3051. Now this is a pre-programmed method that uses a five and a half minute ramp to reach 175 degrees Celsius. Then we hold that 175 Celsius for an additional four and a half minutes. That's right. This is a 10 minute method. Now I'll see why high throughput labs switch from the hot block method to this. Just imagine the number of samples you could process. Okay, sorry. I was just remembering my good old days in the lab when I had to do 3050. This sort of uh, helped me a lot if I had 3051 back in the day. So Elaine, while this is running, do you think you could tell us more about why these EPA methods exist in the first place? Sure, Howie. I'll do my best to squeeze the last 40 some odd years of EPA history into just a few minutes. The history of EPA method 3051A goes all the way back to 1976. And back then, the Office of Solid Waste under the Resource Conservation Recovery Act, or RECRA, promulgated SW846 in response to environmental disasters such as Ohio's Cuyahoga River catching fire and New York's Love Canal disaster in 1978, which resulted in mass evacuation of the area due to the presence of more than 200 organic chemical compounds. 
How you might be a little young to remember that, but uh, well, let's just say that I do. <laughs> so the act gave the U.S. EPA authority to control hazardous waste from the cradle to grave, including waste generation, transportation, treatment, storage, and disposal of harmful materials. U.S. EPA 3051 was promulgated in September of 1994. It was a microwave leach method that used only nitric acid. So a couple years later, in 1996, EPA method 3052 was promulgated as an official method for total decomposition of silicate materials and organic compounds and other complex matrices that included things like ashes, biological tissues, oils, oil contaminated soils, sediments, sludges, and yes, soils. This method includes the use of hydrofluoric acid and other strong oxidizers, and it's used to prepare samples for total compositional elemental analysis. And this is necessary to free elements like chrome and aluminum that are bound within the silicate matrix. And finally, in 2007, revision 3051A was made official, which included the use of hydrochloric acid to stabilize elements of interest such as antimony, iron, and vanadium. And this made recoveries of method 3051A more similar to those achieved with method 3050, the hot plate method, that also included hydrochloric acid. So to this day, EPA 3051A is the most popular method that we support. We like to think of ourselves as the masters of dirt. And CEM is really proud of its role that it played in providing equipment and expertise to help get these methods made into official EPA methods. I sure do have great memories of that work. All right, now that our vessels have cooled, let's dilute our samples. Now remember, these are a leach, so we will have a lot of solid material remaining. So our first sample is our sand. And as you can see, a lot of material still remaining. Next, we have our clay. And I suspect we will have a lot of material remaining in this as well. Yeah, you can see how cloudy this is with a lot of material remaining from the clay. But again, this is a leach, so very expected. And lastly, we have our topsoil. Okay. And once again, we see a lot of material remaining. Okay, let me finish diluting these up and I'll meet you back at the bench. All right, we have finished the dilutions and here are our digested or leached sand, clay, and topsoil samples. And we definitely have some material left over. The US EPA 3051A method allows for three ways to handle the remaining solids. You can either centrifuge at two to 3,000 RPM for 10 minutes, you can let them settle overnight, or you can filter them. Since this is a high throughput method, I just happen to have some samples that were prepared and centrifuged earlier today so that we can compare the differences. First, let's take a look at, here is the sand that just came out of the microwave. And here's a sand that was centrifuged earlier. Take a look at that nice pellet. Here's our clay that just came out of the microwave. Very cloudy. And here's our clay sample that had been centrifuged. Again, quite the difference. Lastly, here's a topsoil that just came out of the microwave. 
compared to a topsoil that has been centrifuged. Now, one thing that we're gonna to have to do here when we analyze, we want to make sure that we adjust our auto sample depth to leave this material undisturbed. Well, Howie, since we're comparing samples, I went ahead and ran these soil digestions using method 3052, so we can see how different these look than your 3051A leach digest. Now keep in mind, in order to achieve total decomposition of the silicate material, I had to use some HF. But be careful because HF causes severe burns and attacks bones, and so it requires some special PPE to handle it, including extra gloves, some face shields perhaps, and using calcium gluconate in case uh, there's accidental exposure. Many labs in North America don't permit the use of HF in the lab because of its toxicity, but some labs do work with it, including ours. So now let's look at these samples. Here's the sand, and this is the most difficult because it was almost totally silica, but we do have a clear solution. Here's the clay. Oh. And finally, here's the topsoil. I won't go into too much detail about method 3052 except to say that it offers much greater freedom and acid choice and it's a more aggressive digestion. So if you have questions about this method, please email us at analytical.support at cem.com and we'll be glad to answer all of your questions. Elaine, as always, you're a wealth of information. So can we leach soils using US EPA 3051A and totally digest them using 3052? Does the use of HF digest a silicon matrix? Yes, it does. And yes, yes we, we can. can.